So we just start with six balls? Yeah, yeah and then we can do one after that. So it's perfect. All right, let's go. Tennis coaching is tough. You know, you're leaving your family. Uh, you're away on the road for 30, 35, 40 weeks sometimes. You're reliant upon your player performing, which determines how much money you're making. And a lot of decisions are made at a whim. It could be a week-to-week -week win or a loss, and there's no reliability. It's not like you're an NBA coach or an AFL football coach where you're signing a contract for a year or two. Basically, you're week-to-week -week in tennis. The coach has to bring a lot to the table, but keeping their player uh, positive and believing in themselves is perhaps their biggest attribute. And I think Darren does the same thing with Simona. She seems much more sure of herself in this tournament, what she wants to do on the court. Once you know what the game plan is and you know you have the shots to implement that game plan, um, then it makes life a lot easier. So take the net out of play. Nothing inside the service line in the first 10 or 15 minutes. Give the ball plenty of height. Good depth. Perfect. A little more height, Simo. That's it. Loosen that arm up for that one, especially when you're inside the baseline there and you've got to get a little better angle. Make sure that arm is nice and loose so you get that spin. Not so tight. Coaching's kind of in my blood. It's kind of through my family's blood as well. And I was on the road. You know, tennis has been such a big part of my life since I was 16, basically getting on a plane and going overseas. So for the last 38 years, I've been doing 30 weeks, 35 weeks away. So I think that having that year back in Australia was great. I told that story about thinking I was doing the, the, the right thing for my family over 12 months ago when I came home and said, hey kids, I'm taking a, a year off work. and and I'm going to be around a little bit more, and my daughter started crying. And, and I thought she was really happy, but she was pissed <laughs> that, that I was leaving Simona. So that's what she means to my family. So it, not much changed, I just wasn't at as many tournaments. How does, how does Australia feel without Darren? Weird and tough, <laughs> but he's around. He gave uh, me some advice. Um, he, went, uh, he came on court with me for some practices. Um, I really thank him for being so close and we are great friends. So even if we are not coach player, we are friends. Well, we have a lot of fun. Uh, actually, I have learned from him how is to have fun on court. Uh, we have four years, five years already working together. So I have learned many things uh, in this direction from him. He's a very relaxed person, I'm not. So I'm trying just to adjust that to myself. Uh, but he's very serious as well. When uh, we have to work, we work, we don't laugh. But uh, when we have to laugh, we laugh. So you know Arti just got off a plane from Romania, so you're going to have to take it a bit easy on him, Simone? Not really. No? No. No mercy for him? No. Even though he's jet lagged? No. He has to work hard. All right, I'd like to hear that. Well, it came about because she wanted to do her part and everyone was donating for ACEs. And she said, you know, what's going to be a good way for me to donate some money and what's the best way I can raise some money? And I, I threw out, well, every time you give me a hard time, you can throw in a couple of hundred bucks. And she said, perfect. So that's how it came about. I don't know if he told you already, but uh, how many times I did, but he told me that he will let me know after I finish here. So for the moment, I'm chilled, but uh, I'm sure that there is a big amount. You're giving $200 to the Bushfire Relief Fund every time you, you look at your box in quite a, a strong way. <laughs> so, who is keeping track of the total? Darren is uh, counting uh, these looks. Um, have I been worse than yesterday, than last match? <laughs> I think I've been worse a little bit, but uh, it's for a good cause, so uh, I go for it and I'm allowed to do anything I want. So I feel, for the first time, I feel happy on court. <laughs> to make jokes sometimes, uh, even if um, it's like hard work uh, down there on the, on the court, uh, you have actually to enjoy a shot and uh, to smile when uh, you have the chance. Um, before, I haven't uh, smiled at all on court, so now I, I have learned that, and uh, it's much better to relax yourself in that way. She's got it, Simona Hallam. This is Simona Hallam at her best. Simona Hallam, that's top quality, top draw. She's looking better with every tick of the clock, and both player and coach pretty happy with what they've seen. 
the Grand Slam champion now. I think that's given her the belief and the confidence and that swagger that she has on the court and that ability to know that even if she's in trouble or if someone's coming back, uh, she can take a deep breath. She's been able to solve those problems before. She's been able to work it out. She's gotten to the finish line in the Grand Slam tournament. She, uh, she, last five years, she hasn't finished below the number four player in the world. So she's been like this every year. And that goes to her determination and her work ethic and her professionalism. And so that's all her. It's full credit to Simona because she's earned that. Everything he says is a special thing for me. Um, it's, he told me many things. He told me that I have just to stay strong with my head. And today, actually, I talked to him and he told me that I'm crazy. So I knew that, but yeah, <laughs> coming from him is a little bit more important. Um, he always gives me good advice and uh, I listen to him. I think I will listen to him forever.